what's up? I'm Micah. And I'm Vance. We are the Aston Shuffle. And you're watching BPM Radio Australia. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on BPM Radio Australia. We're here, guys, at the Northcote Social Club in Melbourne with the Aston Shuffle. Guys, thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah, thank you for coming out. Um, yeah, looking forward to the shows. Um, yeah, can't wait. <laughs> and your new single, Tear It Down, tell us a little bit about how that track came about. Um, well, we spent a period of time sort of, uh, well, I guess the, the start of that song came up when we took some time out and um, rented a holiday house in Ulladulla. And we spent a month just in this little bubble of just writing seeds and demos. No kind of real sort of thought about it. It was just about writing ideas and the kind of the kernel of that, I guess, idea felt really, really good. We sat on it for a while and then we went to um, London and we spent a couple of weeks in London working with um, some singers and some songwriters and stuff. And it was a pretty inspiring time, actually, like the studio we're working out of. Um, it's pretty, pretty prolific. It's a pretty amazing studio. Like um, Liam Howlett from The Prodigy was in the studio above us and uh, Mark Ronson was in the studio below us. I think we kind of snuck into his studio a couple of times and played with his MPC and stuff like that and a few of his uh, synths and stuff. But um, yeah, basically we had the, the, this idea and we'd been working on it for a couple of days and we got this, this young singer in called Will Hurd. Like we had the top line and the, the chords and kind of like the basic demo, the idea of the song and this, this 19 year old kid just came in and absolutely slayed this vocal. It was like, it was such a, a hair raising kind of feeling for us creating this song. It was, it was, it was amazing and basically, yeah, like, um, the funny thing about this kid is he has this such raw energy that you kind of, it's like this untamed kind of energy, you can't really get him to do specific things. The best thing, the, the conclusion we came to for the best result was to literally loop the chords in Terra Down and just loop, loop them and basically record him for like about an hour or two and just let him just while out all off the cough, you know what I mean, and we basically went back came back home and we started kind of figuring out where this tune was going to go production wise and stuff and then basically I think Vance spent probably the best part of a couple of days trying to piece together this, this vocal and stuff and yeah it's, it's, it's amazing um, the way people have been resonating with this record because we really believed in it when we created it. The, the original kind of kernel demo of the idea we felt it was a really really special song and to sort of now see it come to fruition it's, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling you know what I mean to sort of you know do tours off it and our album's coming out very very soon and I guess the the success that this song has had just really gives us faith that people are actually going to like our album as well so it's a big kind of a, a big moment really I think for us. And your album comes out on the 28th of March, what can people expect from this album? Um, so I'll just grab that off you, just <laughs> let, get, rid, get rid of the awkward lean. Um, yeah, no, there's, there's, you know, more of more of the same, I guess. Like, Tear It Down and Comfortable have been two really good kind of, like, teasers into what the rest of the album's going to have on it. Um, there's more sort of stuff on that dance kind of tempo. There's a few more slower tempo things. There's a few kind of, like, you know, things all over the place uh, in terms of styles and tempos and stuff like that. The next single's actually, you know, probably uh, not really at a dance floor kind of tempo, I'd say. Uh, so, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. It's like a straight up pop song rather than being like a dancey pop kind of thing, hybrid, whatever. But um, yeah, yeah. Just, just now that it's done, it feels very cohesive as like a whole album body of work type thing, I guess. So uh, yeah, but if you're feeling the the two tracks that are already out, then you're definitely gonna like the rest of it. Hopefully. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And what's the tool? What's the? T <laughs> He's interviewing me now. Tell me, tell me your question. And what's the tour been like so far? It's been great, actually. I'll <laughs> take the microphone. No, it's been awesome. Like uh, the first weekend was last weekend, and the big thing for us in this tour, I think, like eighty percent of the songs are totally brand new songs that no one's ever heard before. So for us, it's an incredibly nerve-wracking feeling, like playing music that no one's ever heard before but the reactions we've been getting have just been absolutely amazing you know I think like we have like our our 
like fan base that are coming out, but also a new fan base like the Terra Down has sort of touched on and stuff. So they're just getting to know us for the first time as well. And um, yeah, the last four shows that we did last weekend, like Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast, and Byron Bay, were all really, really amazing shows. And for the very first time in our show, we've actually incorporated a really, really strong visual element, which is kind of like the climax of the show. And this is something we've never done before, so it's quite scary and a lot of effort and a lot of um, painstaking uh, hours went into this visual component of the show but it's it's really coming off really well and it's really blowing people away like we don't want to give it away as to what it is but if you've seen the tear it down music video you might get some kind of idea of what's what's in the show but yeah we're doing um, three shows in Melbourne this week which is amazing for us like we've got so much love for Melbourne um, always have for many many years I think when even Vance started writing music you know he's a lot of his peers came from melbourne and stuff like that so we have a really really strong history with um melbourne music so to know that we're doing you know two shows are sold out and tonight's close to being sold out it's a it's a really great feeling and i'll hand you back the mic <laughs> and you guys are about to get on in about an hour here in melbourne at the northcote social club yep. do you guys have any pre-gig rituals before you get on anything maybe to settle the nerves or anything like that uh not really, like I, I tend to get pretty nervous before shows yeah. and it's, it's, I don't know, it depends on, on your mood really. I don't yeah. really have a ritual so much, it's just trying to cope with however I'm feeling on the particular day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you just want to kind of quietly pace up and down to yourself and just be chill. Sometimes you want to have some drinks and, you know, kind of like let it out a little bit, you know what I mean? It just depends on, on the thing. But in terms of like a hard and fast ABC, like superstitious type thing, uh, yeah, I don't really do that. Yeah. I think like we kind of maybe sort of hug it out just before we go on stage, you know, like psych, psych ourselves up, but no like, yeah, exactly, you know, you're beautiful baby, that's about it. <laughs> what about in terms of once you guys have actually finished the gig, do you, is there anything you guys like to do to relax after a gig, to come down from the adrenaline? Oh, uh, we like to throw a few back after the show, <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing really, like I think um, the, th the, the hard thing about, I guess, your own live show is... You know, we're not rich and famous yet, so we have to pack up, you know, set up our own shows, pack down your own shows. So by the time you've packed down, it's almost like just this massive adrenaline dump and, yeah. you know, you're just you're so hyped and you have all this nervous energy. And then once you pour your, pour your heart and soul out into the crowd, you know, by the time you've packed down, you just absolutely just, I just want to go home and sleep kind of yeah. thing, you know, onto the next show kind of thing. But occasionally we, uh, we party pretty hard after a show. Yeah, if we wanted to, um, you know, if we were in a position to kind of like have dedicated, you know, like roadie minions to like yeah. take everything down for us, it's like, thanks guys, you're awesome, I'm out. Yeah, we then we out. could then, you know, we would probably party a lot more than we do. But yeah, self-sufficiency being the aim of the game, not so much. And I'm interested to know, what do you guys like in the studio when you go into to produce? Do you guys go in there with a vision of what you want to do and what you want to achieve? Or do you sort of just go into the studio with a blank canvas and just sort of let inspiration just take you take its course? I think like in the initial stages of um, writing we definitely sort of we do a lot of stuff individually and then we kind of share vibes and ideas and stuff and then if something feels like you know okay that's a sick idea or that's a great hook or those are sick drums and we kind of go okay now what can we do with it kind of thing and then we sort of get together for the core kind of songwriting especially like our original stuff on our album we spend a lot of time sort of writing the core stuff together but I think individually we draw influences on very different things as well so what might inspire Vance at that time and space not might not necessarily inspire me my inspiration might come from something else so um, yeah I think that's really good writing individually and then kind of getting together for the sort of the guess the core sort of songwriting stuff I dare say. Yeah and in, term, in terms of like having a vision versus a blank canvas or whatever like when it's really really early on in like you know we want to be doing three weeks worth of writing to come up with just demos of like new stuff to kind of see where it goes then obviously like in that kind of time frame like, like in that part, part of the process you don't want to kill anything like too quickly you want to just not let anything like don't poo poo anything out of existence before it's had a chance to like be anything but you know um when you're when a deadline is looming and you know a track has to be you know like you've got a feeling that it's a single then you want to like make it a single and if you're feeling like there's a like it should be something you know what i mean you can kind of be like steered by it later um 
at which point you become more focused about what you're working on and you're not just throwing everything at the wind. But then sometimes, you know, like there's a track on the album that was came out of, I can't even remember what track I was working on, but it was some other track completely. It's like, these sounds are cool, but they don't fit this. But don't kill them, take them over here. And then within like a week, it was a whole new song that's actually on the album that came together really, really quickly. So, you know, that's the thing. You don't want to kill anything from the wrong direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just on that, just for the people you know that, that aren't aware, how challenging is it actually when you've got a deadline to make a track, you know, to find that inspiration when, especially when it's not coming? Um, if it's not coming, then I think you've got to try a few oblique strategies. But um, deadlines breed pressure, and pressure is something I think we thrive on. And and there's a point where it gets dysfunctional, where you're kind of like lazy to the point where oh wait. You know, you're lazy to a point where you create the pressure artificially to in order to, you know what I mean? You don't want to let it get twisted like that. But yeah, pressure is great. Pressure, you know, like as an abstract thing, pressure is, you know, considered to be something that, you know, pushes people to make results. But in our like specific case as well, yeah, I think we respond pretty well to pressure. Yeah. Now, what about in terms of instrumentation? Like, I mean, personally for me, that's something that stands out immediately. There, there are a lot of electronics act, acts out there that don't incorporate those live elements in their live performances. Is that something that you guys consider when you're producing a track? Like, you know, how is this going to work out when we perform it live? Or is it something where you just produce a track first and then worry about the logistics of how it's going to be performed live later on? Yeah, I think for us, the way we work, it's all about the song first and foremost. We don't necessarily, like, we might go, oh, you know, something might come to mind when we're working on a song, like, oh, imagine if we did this live, or, you know, oh, hey, you could do this live, but it certainly doesn't dictate the, the cer certain aspects of the song itself kind of thing. Like, we wrote this album with no real kind of, like, idea how we were going to perform it, and then once we wrote the record, we are like, okay, now how are we going to perform it, you know, and then really broke the songs yeah. down that way, and... Um, I mean, certain people work that way, but for us, it's just about the, the music first and foremost, and then basically work out the painstaking process of how we're going to perform it live, pretty much. Now, if you guys weren't DJing and producing and you didn't have the wonderful career that you guys have now, what do you think you'd be doing? Yes. <laughs> um, I really don't know. I... I you know, I went to uni, so I think I could probably, you know, figure out a fallback position of some kind. But if I wanted to, I probably wouldn't have pursued this, you know what I mean? Like, like there's any number of, like, hypotheticals you could kind of throw out there. But at the end of the day, I think for both of us, we've pursued the thing that we feel the most passionate about. And yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's one of those things where, like, you know, um, we just love making music and that's... Kind of, you know what I mean? That we don't really necessarily spend too much time thinking about the, you know, how long the Centrelink queue is if it doesn't work out. You know what I mean? You want to try focusing on 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 staying away from it, not what you do when you get there. <laughs> Although that certainly at times adds to the artificial pressure, the oh, fear yeah, of you know not being able to do. There's certainly periods where you kind of feel like you know. Yeah, you go through periods where you know. Uh, yeah, you realise, especially considering how long it took us to, to write this record, there's definitely times where it's like, oh God, really? Do, are we gonna be in the, is it going to be another six months before people can hear anything? Like, you know, um, that's a form of pressure in itself. But in terms of, no, I'm going to go and do this with my life and it's a whole, like, epiphany type thing, yeah, we don't really get down with that. The funny thing is, the, the funny thing is about um, our career choice and trajectory was something really really natural like when we got together and first started writing music it was just for the love of music and hanging out and creating something together and then all of a sudden people started resonating with our music and we started getting hitting up for remixes and stuff and then all of a sudden a record label is like knocking on our doors and going hey we want to sign you and we want we feel there's like a future with you guys and we were just like kind of like oh wow okay really all right well do you want to do music yeah let's do it you know it was it was a very natural process and i think that's one thing about um us when we're creating um music it just feels like a very natural process we're very sincere about what we do and that's something that i definitely tell upcoming producers and people who are artists and stuff if you're honestly sincere about what you do then I think that really stands out, you know what I mean? And that's all we've ever done with me, like when writing music and when we perform and stuff like that, it's just all about being sincere and giving your all and I think people resonate with that, you know what I mean? And what would you say is your biggest challenge 
uh, for, for you know a musician in the music industry to, to deal with? I think probably standing out. There's a, such a massive, like, there's like it's like the signal to noise ratio in the current climate of music is just pretty, pretty out there. You know, there are so many people, you know, who have a decent laptop and you know downloaded a crack of some music program and you know within a couple of months they're able to write music. You know what I mean? It's just it's so easily attainable that anyone can do it now. But to really really stand out you need to sort of come up with a certain sound or do something that maybe not everyone else is doing um, it's totally easier said than done but that was something that we really 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 strived for in terms of like when we came up with the, the Aston Shuffle sound I suppose you know we really um, tried to draw on all these influences of certain sounds that were happening at the time and really sort of bring them out in our own way and I think that'd be the, the big thing is trying to be unique and original in whatever you do kind of thing because yeah there's a lot of people out there doing probably the same thing as what you're trying to do but what do you have to say um yeah i reckon that's definitely a big one like internet era yeah, uh it's it's you know um things blow up and die away like the cycle of of things coming and going is really quick you know people's attention spans are shorter you know, there's like, you could talk for till, you know, the cows come home about like what that is and where it comes from. But, you know, just coping with that whole set of things that the internet now creates, it, like, you know, it's it's uh, definitely an interesting sort of time to be, you know, forging a, a, a livelihood in the music industry, yeah. Now, is there anything that you guys would like to achieve in your careers that you haven't achieved yet in the music industry? Yeah, we'd love like a platinum or gold record, that's for sure. Wow. Platinum, definitely. W uranium. I was <laughs> we saying that the other day. I don't think like, you know, we, we are incredibly stoked and humbled that we actually get to do this for a living. So I think for us, that's the biggest gift in itself. But I think we're just so hungry for everything and anything, you know what I mean? Like it's about putting your music out there and having people resonate with that first and foremost and then just taking it from there, you know what I mean? Like we're fortunate enough to sort of have a, a nationally syndicated radio show as well. So just really diversifying your bonds and, you know, putting yourself out there and trying different things, but just just being hungry and just really going after it, never really being satisfied with what you have, you know, like don't take that the wrong way though we're incredibly humbled and you know grateful that we get to do what we do for a living but it's just never being really just just yeah. content you know what i mean yeah. but you don't want to feel like like it's kind of weird but you don't want to like dwell on achievements you want to yeah. be constantly striving for new things because the second you, d you dwell on what you've already done you get complacent you start getting really bored creatively like it's just it doesn't breed good things it's kind of like the record's done, right, what's next? And it's what's next that counts, you know what I mean? Like, those things like like gold records and arias or whatever, like, they're up, like you could you could never say plausibly that they're not goals or, th or like something to strive for, but they're lagging indicators when you're already thinking about the next thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And how did you gentlemen actually get involved in music in the first place? Um, I was very fortunate to have a musically inclined mother in a sense that you know she forced Pink Floyd records on me and Led Zeppelin records on me from a very early age and then basically made me get drum lessons from like the age of eight so whether I liked it or not music was a very big focus for my life and um, yeah like I was drumming in bands when I was a teenager and stuff and then kind of went out and saw a DJ one time and just sort of like just was totally blown away by the energy this one guy had on a whole crowd in a room it was really really inspiring to the point where I went out and sold my drum kit a week later and bought a pair of turntables and cried myself to sleep for about six months because I didn't know what the hell I was doing with these things and I sold my drum kit but yeah as I like obviously you know learned how to DJ properly worked in music stores um, and sort of you know was the local record dealer in town so I, I've I've basically, I think I was probably destined to work in music in some capacity and then obviously learned, wanted to learn how to write music, like electronic music and basically, yeah, just took it from there really and then ended up meeting Vance and in, like in Canberra the club scene was very intimate, very small, everyone kind of knew everyone and Vance and I kind of realised we were into the sort of the same things and started writing music together and alas, I'm here in Melbourne 
talking to you guys before our show in Northcote. That's my personal story anyway. Um, yeah, obviously a large part of that intersects with me as well, but like, I, yeah, my parents like always had music in the house. They weren't necessarily like musical people, but they had like a, a sort of small collection of stuff that was on kind of like high rotation, I guess. Most of which was cool, some of it was a little bit whack, but um, yeah, I, I was apparently musical right, like right from the get-go. I started playing piano when I was like three or four. Um, studied that all the way through, and then when I was 13, my you know best mate at school's brother was a DJ and gave like his brother like stole all the tapes and brought them in. And at this point, I had obviously already been playing piano for a while and was into music and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is this? This is ridiculous. I've never heard this before. Something about it that just became like instant obsession. Um, learned how to DJ when I was 13, um, and then yeah, I kind of like just. This thing just became an obsession out of nowhere, and kind of still is, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, the very first thing I ever put out, I was 17 when it came out. I was 16 when it got signed, but it came out when I was 17. Started DJing like in clubs when I was 15. Um, so you know, in terms of how people come to dance music, I've kind of had a bit of an unorthodox story, I guess. It wasn't about the partying and the alcohol and the drugs or whatever. It was about the music. Yeah. And finally, gentlemen, what have you guys got planned for 2014? Um, well, obviously, we've finally finished our record that's coming out in uh, March 28th. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> <totally. laughs> um, yeah, plug, plug. But um, yeah, we're currently um, on tour at the moment. It's the Tear It Down tour, so it's all about just pushing our single at the moment. Um, and then once that's done, we're going to be um, thinking about our album tour. And again, we'll be trying to take the, t the show up a, f a few notches after this tour. And then, um, yeah, probably heading back overseas. So we did three tours of America last year. So I think it's um, like international touring is definitely a massive focus for us as well. Obviously, um, yeah, still doing our radio show and writing records and stuff, really. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty full-on, full-on, full-time job. But um, yeah, we love every minute. Um, yeah, there's, that's pretty much it. You've covered all the bases. Nice one. Well, there you have it. The Aston Shuffle. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on BBM Radio.